uh, stationary relatively they will also move so yeah that is that is one problem of the spotting method okay. but when when you are when you are considering the action bank representation the okay. sheer fact that you have such a lot of variability in your like you know inherent in your uh, present uh, in your representation it it seems to just override things a bit and i guess perhaps one final thing to take on this on this point is that uh, action bank sits on top of ac an action detector we've chosen action spotting for its speed and generalizability and so training is simple you just sat at a computer, watch some videos, and pick up which ones are representative. There was no, in, in terms of, right, there was no training for that, for that level of the engine representation. Um, it's just that all the other methods that he was considering, like point-based methods and human pose estimation-based methods, didn't provide the right sort of big output, which I think he'll get to next, that is ultimately what action bank builds on. So the action detector is actually based on pixels or based on vulnerable? I, I will be getting to that in, okay. in, in yeah. two slides from now on. So, yeah, just a quick recap. This is what my energy decomposition for every action looks like. Now, through experimentation, we realize that energy that is being contributed by static <laughs> artifacts in the, in the sequence and by the lack of structure artifacts in the sequence, they are actually causing... Uh, certain points in my left, right, up, down uh, energies to bright up. I mean, I'm getting, uh, you know, you see these white spots over here. They represent, uh, they represent energy motion. Where in, in reality, these artifacts are probably being caused because there is some sort of a lighting. Uh, I mean, illumination variation over here. If you if you can see this video properly, there are certain artifacts that are being uh, introduced just because of you know the quality of the camera that's being used or whatever. So what we decided to do is from each of these uh, motion energies, <laughs> we just plainly subtract static and lack of structure energies. And uh, the hope was we should get a purer measure of, uh, of, of you know, motion energy. And when we did that, this is what it looks like. So you have left, right, up, down, static, flicker, lack of structure. And this one and, uh, and the lack of structure, these are uh, contributing to, uh, you know, uh, superfluous artifacts in my energy motion uh, in my motion decomposition and when I take them out this is what I get and this is a pure representation of motion only things that move get decomposed into these uh, get decomposed into this representation everything else that doesn't move is out of the picture so this is a very rich descriptor or this is a very semantically uh, you know rich descriptor that 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 I use to you know describe or act as a high level uh, descriptor for a human action. So is this slide clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, just to put things in context, this is what is happening. We have an input video broken down into seven uh, energy, uh, I mean, seven spatiotemporal energies. From them, I remove the static and lack of structure and I get five pure motion energies. Now, now let's look at what template matching is. So just to give you an idea of where we are right now, when I spoke about action spotting, uh, currently we have we, we are up till we are up till this point. All we've done is we've taken a video or we've taken a human action and we've decomposed it into its constituent motion energies. Now what are we going to do to actually look for that action in a search video? So we perform something called as template matching. Now, before we see what template matching is, we just need to know a quick thing about how matching is done. Uh, the metric that we've used for uh, matching a template and a search video, or a portion of the search video is about Bhattacharya coefficient. Uh, it's a measure that uh, deals with the amount of similarity between two histograms. Now, every point in the video, so, okay, yeah, so every point in the video corresponds to five feature uh, five feature energy. So you can consider every point in the video to be a five dimensional uh, histogram and because of that in order to perf uh, in order to perform a comparison between the energy representation of a query video and the energy representation of a search video we simply use the Bhattacharya coefficient rate and it, it works pretty well with this method. Um, I don't think I want to explain the math here if you just want to have a moment and see uh, what the equation is like. It's, it's pretty straightforward here. So uh, yeah Going on to the next slide, yeah. Now, how we do the correlation? Now, template matching is what I uh, what.
what we mean when we say uh, correlation. Correlation is just looking at uh, the amount of similarity between two signals. So you have signal A and signal B and you look at how similar A is to B, that's, that's called correlation. What we are doing over here is if we were to do correlation in the spatial domain and when I say the spatial domain, if you look at this image over here, now, uh, yeah, this is my query video, this is my search video. In the spatial domain, I would be calculating similarity between every pixel of my template video and every pixel of my, of my search video. So basically what I'm doing here is, if this is my entire search video, I am moving this template around to look at which part of my search video coincides or uh, you know is similar to a maximum extent with my template video. Now if I do this in, in the spatial domain, it's, it takes a ridiculously long amount of time because we are dealing with dense three-dimensional representation. So an efficient way of doing this would be is to do it in the Fourier domain. Uh, yeah, uh, when we are doing it in the Fourier domain, we take advantage of uh, the convolution theorem which says that convolution in spatial domain is simply uh, the product of the Fourier transforms in the uh, product. Yeah, the product of the Fourier transforms in the frequency domain. So uh, we do correlation in the frequency domain and the thing about uh, three-dimensional FFTs is they are linearly separable. So uh, it, it, it you know greatly reduces uh, the computation expense when you're doing correlation in, uh, in the frequency domain. Now, yeah, so what do we get when I compare like the energy representation of my query video with the energy representation of my search video. It is some, it's some measure that says how similar these two, these two videos are. How similar is my query video with my, temp, uh, with my search video. <coughs> the output of that looks something like this. So let's say this was my query video. That's a longer video with a person doing an action. And the one on the right is my template video. That is the action of interest. I want to look at every occurrence of that kind of motion in a larger video. The correlation surface looks something like this. You can see very clearly that given the template, given that as the template video and that as the query video, this is what my correlation surface looks like. So the, the part which brightens up indicates a similarity at that point between the template video and the query video. Yeah. So, so yes sir, you have uh, prior to time. Yes. Or data. 